Good morning guys, we're in the Integra right now. I know in the last couple videos we've been talking primarily about the nitrous build that we'll be starting soon. But well, we finally got some morning time off of work, so we're gonna be over here working on the wiring of the Integra. The cage is all pretty much set in. We just have to put the uh, windshield back on and fix all the wiring up there. Since we're doing that, we're gonna get rid of all the stock wiring from the back and the middle and the front of the car as well. So we're gonna start by doing the brake light harness. So we've got power to this power probe and uh, black is obviously ground. Then we figured out that these two wires are the running lights and the brake lights. And off the top of my head, I think the red was the running lights and the green was the uh, brake lights. We tested that by hooking up right there, applying power and seeing exactly how bright it comes on. Uh, so the main idea of this is that we're gonna have four wires off of a relay on a switch to turn on two for the front headlights and then two for the running lights in the back and that's just going to turn on off of a switch and have running lights and headlights like i just said and then off of the brake pedal switch we're actually going to wire in the other wire and um, have that only come on when we're hitting the brake pedal obviously as brake lights should work and then the black wire off of here we'll just do it directly to, to body ground right over here so off of each bowl we won't have much wiring because if you look at this area, there is a massive amount of unnecessary wiring that we have left over. Uh, we're also gonna be taking out the rear hatch latch, uh, the assembly in the front, as well as the wire that goes back. Because this model Integra does come with the little key uh, thing to uh, unlock it. So we're going to be able to just use that if we have to open the hatch and really just remove a whole bunch of unnecessary wiring. We ordered a switch panel that should be here in a couple days. Most of you guys already know that the signature look of the Integra has been for the last couple years of having the turn signals riveted closed. So since we don't use the front turn signals, really no point in using the back ones. And this is becoming a, more of a track dedicated car. So for the wiring for the turn signals, we're not gonna worry about it. Then the reverse lights, I don't have it plugged into the transmission anyway, so the reverse lights never work. So we don't have to worry about that part of it. So right now I'm gonna pull the housing of the headlight off and be able to pull all the wiring nice and neat because I wanna keep it all together and be able to weigh how much wiring we actually take out of the car. Just got done removing the tail lights, which come to find out I really didn't need to do. But while I have it out, you can see the little harness that's built into the tail light that just plugs in. Uh, basically we're gonna be using this one right here, the center bulb with the three wires off of it. We'll just cut that and wire it into the relays like we were talking about earlier. And now I'll just start unclipping everything. It should be pretty straightforward. And take this all the way forward to this block. And that ties into the underdash harness. And then I'm also able to take off the stuck seatbelt and seatbelt support and everything now since we do have the harness. But uh, that'll be for a little bit later. Right now I'm just focusing on the wiring. All right, so I just got done working on the gas cap right there, and I've got my assistant in here taking off some more wiring. This is Jackson, by the way. So, you know, he's the little kid learning today. He wants to have a Honda one day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sick of that BMW life always breaking down. Yeah, I just love them Integras, dude. Yeah, I don't blame you. They're the best cars you can get. So we're, we're going to do away with all this stock fuel pump wiring as well. So instead of using the 14 volt fuel pump conversion off of a relay, like we've mentioned in the past videos, we're also going to be doing that off of a switch and an independent relay off of the battery directly. So we're not going to have to worry about the stock wiring or anything. So basically all of this, we're going to be able to just straight, um, yeah, basically jump it all and do it directly off independent switches and whatnot, which I think I'll do. I'll do away with the fuel lever level sender as well because first of all it doesn't work on my cluster for some reason it doesn't work and we're doing an You're ecu doing tank, right? yeah. yeah i'm doing a five gallon fuel cell eventually and probably in the next month or two and we're also going to be doing a, a windows tablet as a cluster instead so just directly con connect it to the ecu decide on dash or no dash right? i haven't decided you yet decide. you know i love the cut dash look but Something it doesn't look the, so bad just having the bar in the middle yeah, I feel like a 240 if I do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're in the midst of removing all the wiring still. Now we're under the dash, or what used to be the dash. And we're getting ready to take the battery off because we're going to be mounting it in the front by the weight plate and eliminating most of the wiring back here. Homeboy doesn't believe me that it's a 12 millimeter nut over here. Talking trash, dude? Yeah, only about you. Oh. 
All right, so we've got the fuel pump relay off of the car. This is going to Yost so he can use it on his DA. And then here's all of the under dash wiring that we don't need at all. I'm guessing there's probably at least like 30 pounds there. And between all of uh, that and what goes to the rear, we have maybe 30 or 40 pounds uh, of unnecessary weight, obviously. And we're just wiring everything in independently, like I said. There's more weight right there. Uh, what else were we gonna do? Oh, we have to remove the stock sway bar in the back and sway bar in the front because even though a lot of people have mixed opinions about that when you're going straight you don't really need it and some people actually say that it improves with handling and launching when you don't have it and uh yeah hopefully next month we can get the fuel tank to be uh made into a, a fuel cell so we'll just do a five gallon that'll save a lot more weight as well and it's coming together uh, sanding down the cage a little bit with some uh, scotch sprite if I can get in here, I blame you. <laughs> so now that that's pretty much scuffed up, we're going to start doing the roll bar, painting it. What you doing, bro? One of the perks is not having the windshield in. Perfect seat. I think Perfect. I'll just leave the dash out so I can sit on this bar. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, uh, we're just finishing up painting yeah. the cage. We did the back half, and I just touched a little bit of paint. You know, we did the back half. <laughs> now we've got the center done, and we're just doing the front right now. Um, I don't know if I'll end up doing the full cage just this color forever, but when I paint the inside of the car, it's going to go red, obviously. And I might do cage gold in the future just so it can match well. But uh, for now, I just don't want it to rust. It looks a lot more even, a lot of, a lot more. Nice. A lot more nice. <laughs> a lot, a lot more, more nice. English, bro. Yeah, dude. It's gonna look a lot more nice once this oh, is yeah. all once this is all painted. A lot more nice. And then we're not removing the dash for weight reduction just because it's comfortable. <laughs> so very quick, quickly, not masking anything off, we were able to paint the cage. It's just a flat black uh, roll cage, roll bar and chassis by VHT that prevents uh, any type of rust and it just gives it a nice clean finish. Obviously the interior was not masked off so once we get done cutting that pillar and this pillar a little bit more, I'll actually paint the interior just with some rattle cam and later on in either this year or next year when I actually paint the whole car, I'll have it professionally painted inside. But I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And with that, I think we're going to head out for the day. So that pretty much sums it up. I got to go wash my face because I got paint and grease all over the place. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Always the updates. I appreciate all the kind words that you guys are uh, giving me, especially on Instagram. Um, if you're not following, it's at Slow Integra. And I just posted up a couple days ago about the V16 manifold on a B20 head, a uh, non-VTEC head. So this is kind of something that's not done very often. But if you have it laying around, it's a good modification. So check on, on my other videos if you want to see how to do small little tricks like that or if you just want to see stuff in general. But like always, guys, thanks for checking out the videos. Uh, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you aren't already. And we'll see you next time. Peace.